Welcome back to Let's Make a Game, a channel about making computer role-playing games using the free program Twine and the Sugarcube format for Twine. In this video, and in videos to come, I would like to tell you about a game mechanic, which I haven't yet discussed, which can make your combat systems more interesting, and in particular give the player interesting decisions, without adding a lot of complexity. I didn't make up this system. In fact, it comes from a war game called Song of Blades and Heroes. In this video, I'm just going to talk about the basic way that the mechanic works, and then in future videos, um, we'll get onto the code that allows it to happen, and ways that you can uh, add complexity and interest once we've got the basics down. The idea is that each character, whether they are a player character, like these four down here, or an enemy, like this four-armed undead sorcerer up here, has an activation chance. And that might be expressed as a percentage, so this character might have an activation chance of 60%, for example, or it might be a range of numbers compared to a dice roll. So if we were using uh, random numbers from 1 to 20, so the equivalent of a 20-sided dice, we might say that this character here has an activation of 13, and this one's got an activation of 8, and so on. And that means that if we simulate rolling a d20, and we get any number from 1 to 13, that counts as an activation, and anything from 14 to 20 counts as a failure. So either way, it's a chance. It's never certain that you will activate, and it's never um, certain that you won't activate. The second part of the system is that you can choose how many attempts to make, usually within a range. So for example, what you can choose to try for one activation, two activations, or three activations. So this character could do the equivalent of rolling one die, two dice, or three dice. And let's say uh, we're using random numbers from 1 to 20. Every time we roll a number from 1 to 13, that's an action that they can do. And every number from 14 to 20 is a failure. So they might roll three dice, and they get two successes and one failure. And that means they can do two actions. Now, you might say, well, but then everyone would always choose to roll three dice because they'd get more activations. Well, this is the the bit that makes it uh, interesting and makes there be decisions. If you fail twice, that's the end of everyone's turn on your side. So this character, if they roll three dice, let's say they get one success and two failures. They're a little bit unlucky. Well, they get their one action, so they might be able to make an attack or cast a spell or whatever. But because they had two, two failures, these other three characters don't get a go at all. The initiative passes straight to the bad guy. So there's an obvious sort of question of, well, I want to roll lots of dice so I get lots of actions, and therefore I can do lots of attacks, lots of damage, or what, you know, lots of healing, whatever it may be. But I also don't ever want to get two failures. So that suggests that I shouldn't roll too many dice. So... You know, so what do I do? Do I use a lot of dice on the good characters if they've got a particularly good attack, or what? If you uh, set it up and set it up properly, that can create interesting decisions. You can add complexity. For example, you might say, "Well, you need one success to do a normal attack, but if you have two successes, you can do an attack that ignores armor or something like that." Uh, if you have two successes, that allows you to cast a very powerful spell. It might be more than twice as good as a one success spell, for example. So there might be a temptation of, well, do I want to gamble? Do I want to go for that? And if you set up the odds interestingly, the answer as to what you should do won't be obvious in a given situation, and that's what you want as a, as a game designer. You want there to be a decision that the player has to make that is consequential, that, that makes a difference as to whether they're going to win or lose, and the answer to what the right thing to do is shouldn't be obvious, but it also shouldn't be so 
obscure that they can't possibly work it out. And I believe, and I'll hope to show uh, in the videos to come, that this system is an example of a mechanic that creates that kind of choice, that tends to create that kind of choice. So, it, as I said in this video, I just wanted to give you an overview of the system. In videos to come, uh, we'll look at the code, we'll look at how it works in more detail. Um, hopefully that'll explain, if, if, if I haven't been clear, ho you know, hopefully seeing it work step by step will make that clear to you, and then we'll look at uh, complexities that you can add to make it even more interesting. So I will leave it there for now. I hope that was useful or interesting to at least some of you, and I hope you will tune in next time.